All right, so one of the things that a boxer works on is their power, simply because they wanna be able to knock somebody down or out. Also, it helps them threaten the opponent and makes them think twice before they counter punch with anything. But unfortunately, not everybody has power in their hands. That's why some boxers are called pillow hands because no matter how hard they punch, they just can't get that power out. You can have a 52 kilogram fighter who can punch like a heavyweight and you can have a heavyweight who can't even give a mosquito any headaches. Today I'm gonna to show you five different pro boxer secrets on how to get that power in your hands. So get ready to knock somebody out. But before all that, I want you, yes you who's looking at me right now, I want you to click on that subscribe button and also please share this video to other people so that they may also learn. If you're ready to get down, let me share you these top five secrets. Hi, my name is JR. I'm a professional boxing coach for 13 years and I'm a champion maker. Tune in. All right, secret number one. You have to breathe as you punch out. If you don't breathe, your muscles will stiffen up and you can't get a power punch out. Imagine if you're not breathing, everything is so stiff that you won't be able to get a snap at the end of the punch. So I have my student Leo to show you how to breathe properly. On power punches, you want to breathe from your diaphragm, huh, not from the throat. This is from the throat. Coming from here, huh. All right, so just like I said, you have to breathe when you punch. When you breathe when you punch, you're not stiff. Nothing is contracting, you're relaxed. And when you're relaxed, you can get a snap out nicely. Huh. I want you to breathe from the diaphragm, huh. Huh. Yeah, that's it. Again, huh. One more, huh. So always remember, breathe when you punch. Do not hold your breath when you're punching. Do not bite your lip. Let that breath out so everything is relaxed and you can get a snap out. All right, next secret. You have to follow through when you punch. You can't just punch at the target. You gotta follow through, okay? That follow through is what's gonna make your punch realize its best potential. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If Leo punches and he punches only at the target, So as you, can, as you can see and you can hear that there's not a solid impact on that pad because he's pulling back his punches way too quick. So, so this is the idea. Even if he's punching here or here, this is where he's looking at, but this is where he wants to go. So basically he's going about three inches through the target and hitting this one right here. This is basically what he's trying to see. Give me a, a right hand. Yeah, so even though here's where, he, here's where he's hitting, he's trying to hit also through the target, which is back here. So this is how the follow through goes. Yeah. Again. Good. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Yeah. So as you can see, he's not just like pulling that punch right when he, uh, right when he touches the target. He's actually going through the uh, pad but he's not leaning forward at the same time. It's just to make sure that your body weight is going through the target before you pull it back. Next tip, do not punch with your body very straight, okay? The reason for that is because when you punch and when you're standing too straight and you make impact with your opponent who's also standing very, very firm, what's gonna happen is you're gonna push your body backwards. Watch this, I'm standing very straight there's no hunch in my back, right? And I'm not assessing the distance well enough, so when I punch, I'm going backwards. What I wanna do, same like the follow through, I wanna be able to drop my shoulder a little bit more into the punch, allowing my body weight to go into the punch, right? Oh, I'm right there, see? I'm not getting pushed back by my, punch, by my own punch. Remember something, don't underestimate your opponent. Always make, always think that he's also standing firm and secure on that, on that canvas. So when you hit, don't hit like this. Don't pop your head up. Always make sure you're low, you hit and you commit, follow through and get that back in there so that you can have your body weight working for you through that punch. 
Next tip, you have to make sure you're in a great position before you punch. If Leo was standing in front of the bag and he wants to hit a right cross and he's too close, obviously there will be no space for him to work it. Show him how you throw a cross from this, from this range. Go, as hard as you can, nothing. Because he's not in the position to punch. So in order for him to get that cross out nicely, he must be standing either mid-range or a little bit past mid-range in order for him to be able to turn that body weight in into the punch. Try again. Go. Again. Good, good. Now, same goes for shorter punches like uppercuts. So say for example, he's standing long range or mid-range. Throw an uppercut for me. Not advisable. He's open and he's trying to reach out. So in order for him to get an effective uppercut in, he has to move closer to the target. Once again, positioning yourself perfectly first so that you can get a good punch out. An uppercut please, left or right. Good. Don't scoop the uppercuts. Good. Give me a left. Like we always say, position before execution. Position yourself first before you execute a punch and your punches will be a whole lot, and your punches will be a whole lot more effective and harder. All right, next tip. You wanna make sure you're using your body weight to punch. You don't wanna be shoulder dominant like this. You can have a snap from the shoulders, but you're not gonna get that power punch if you don't add your body weight into it. Now, please get in boxing position. As we always know, power always comes from your foot. So, say for example, Leo's gonna execute a cross. He's gonna first get the power by turning the ball of his foot, his rear foot, turn the ball of your foot, and then squeezing his hip forward as he punches. So all that kinetic chain power will travel through his lateral muscles and onto his arms. I want you to only show them the foot and the hip. So turn the foot and the hip, just like so. His forehead is not going past his toe for perfect balance. You want to always sit in the middle so that your balance is always in the, in the center. You're not, you're not tumbling around. Now, execute the whole cross for me again, please. Just like so. You want to be able to turn your hip. You want to snap your hip. And also, not because you're only using your right, your right hand, you're not going to pay attention to your left. If this is going forward this way, the left is propelling backwards in order, for you, in order for you to get a better snap. Show them how that looks like. Good. See, he's not only paying attention, one more. He's not only paying attention to his right, but he's also paying attention to rotating his left backwards so that it helps the right go forward a whole lot more. So this kind of movement adds about 30 to 40% more into your original power just to get that snap in there. So, so always, always throw your body weight along with your punches, but also not overreaching. And last but not the least, you have to train your muscles for explosiveness. There's a lot of different conditioning workouts that you can do for uh, shoulder explosiveness, uh, rotation, hips, core, your triceps, your biceps, also your pecs for pushing. So I'm not gonna go into detail. This, uh, that's gonna be for another video, but that is my last tip. So I hope you enjoy these tips on how to add more power to your punches. If you wanna hear more topics from me, just comment below, let me know what you wanna hear, and I'll break it down for you guys, okay? Thanks a lot again. Make sure you subscribe, share this video, and I appreciate you guys, peace.